let's continue with our presentation of the simple or elementary bifurcations. Next up is something called a transcritical bifurcation. Transcriticals, they're not as common as the saddle nodes that we've seen. They model crossings of equilibria as opposed to creation thereof. Okay, so in continuous time, transcritical bifurcation, what's the normal form? What's the simplest example? This is dx equals mu x plus c x squared, where again, c is a non-zero constant. Mu is the parameter. You can have higher order terms in there if you want, but we're going to ignore them for the following analysis. Now note, first of all, how similar this is to the saddle node. The only difference is instead of mu, we have mu times x. I wonder what that's going to do. Well, let's follow the analysis. This system has equilibria where we set the right-hand side equal to zero, I factor out an x, and I get x equals zero, or x equals minus mu over c. So then, as long as mu is non-zero, we always have two equilibria. At mu equals zero, we have exactly one degenerate equilibrium. Okay, let's do a stability analysis. We have to take the derivative of the right-hand side. That is the derivative of mu x plus cx squared. That gives us mu plus 2cx. So we can very easily classify these equilibria. First, at x equals zero, this derivative evaluates to mu. That means, no matter what the value of c, when mu is negative, we have a stable equilibrium at zero. When mu is positive, we have an unstable equilibrium at zero. On the other hand, if I look at the other equilibrium at x equals minus mu over c, then the derivative of the right-hand side evaluates to negative mu. That means that when mu is negative, this second equilibrium is unstable, and when mu is positive, the second equilibrium is stable. Now, we notice from the stability analysis that things seem to, to flip. These two equilibria always have opposite stability. That kind of makes sense. But what does the big picture mean? What does this system look like? To visualize this bifurcation, we're going to do what we did in the case of a saddle node, plot things in the mu versus x plane. I'm going to choose a particular value of c, negative 1, so that we're looking at dx equals mu x minus x squared. Now we have two lines of equilibria, one line, a vertical line, at x equals 0. And when mu is negative, this is stable. When mu is positive, this is unstable. But we also have a line of equilibria at x equals mu. And here the stabilities have flipped. When mu is negative, this is an unstable equilibrium. When mu is positive, it's a stable equilibrium. If we look at the dynamics, launch initial conditions and let them flow forwards, then what we see is that we have this bent branch of stable equilibria and this bent branch of unstable equilibria. Again, remember, you have to think about this in terms of choosing a particular value of mu and then looking at the system at that value and then changing mu. And what we see is that whether mu is positive, whether mu is negative, you're going to have one stable and one unstable equilibrium. Now, in this particular case, we've got the unstable equilibria off to the left and the stable equilibria off to the right. You change the value of c, that could flip over. The thing to remember about the transcritical bifurcation is as mu passes through zero, you have a pair of equilibria, one stable, one unstable, that collide into each other and cross. They exchange stabilities. That's very different than the saddle node that we saw earlier. That's what the transcritical bifurcation looks like. Again, transcritical bifurcations involve two opposite stability equilibria, colliding, swapping stabilities. You're going from two equilibria to one equilibrium back to two.